Today we're going to look at the slave trade game. Is it historical or racist? You decide. Well, let's open the YARG file on this game and see what it's about. The slave trade is part of the Playing History series from a company called Serious Games. It came out in 2013, and you can get the game for about $4 on Steam. Now I know what you're thinking, this is not normally the sort of title that I review on this channel. I usually do retro games, but hey, there seems to be an issue with the game that's been in the media lately. It seems that the Danish publisher of this game may have accidentally put in a little bit of racism, but it could just be that it's a case of cultural insensitivity. Who knows? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's get on with the review. My full hour and a half gameplay session of this game is available on my other channel, so if you want to see it, click the box that's on the screen. Okay, let's get past the crappy intro music and start a new game. I clearly remember the day I got torn away from my home and brought to the coastline in chains. The journey over the big ocean, the terrors on board. It was pure luck I survived. And it was also my luck I got acquired by the captain. He shipped me to his home, England, where I now serve as his slave. Soon we'll depart on our next journey away from rainy England to the distant shores I once called my home. So yeah, this is a point-and-click adventure similar to old Sierra games, and you play the slave child you were introduced to in the intro. Tim, stop walking around like a headless horse crab. Mr. Rotherbloom and I have just signed our contract. Soon we're going to get slaves for the Caribbean markets. Go get us that golden bottle of brandy on the counter, so Mr. Blotherbloom and I can seal the deal with a drink. You can click on certain objects in the game and it'll give you information, like this map. And the game does seem to do a good job of making sure that you know your place in the world as a slave. Don't speak unless you're told to. Did you get the brandy? Ah, very good. Sometimes I think we'll get a decent person out of you yet. Our mission takes us to Africa, close to the village where you lived before you became my slave. You should have a look at the places we will travel to on the wall map. Now, where is my pipe? I always put it in my right pocket. Seven blundering blisters. I must have dropped my precious pipe at the docks. Run and fetch it, Tim. And along the way, a talking mouse will help you. Click the point counter to see what hides behind it. The mouse will help you with things like the interface and if you're trying to find specific object, scavenger hunt things that people are asking you for in the game. Here this mouse is showing you where the score and achievement box is. This keeps track of your progress in the game. All right, little slave, listen. We'll be going to the part of Africa where you came from. And we want you to join us, since you speak the native language. But I need to know that you will be loyal to us on this mission. It will be tough, and you might even meet someone you know, or have heard of before. We need you, but know that if you're disloyal, there will be no mercy. Now, swear by God that you'll be loyal to us. Very good. You know that Captain Seahab's eyes will be watching your every move. One mistake, and I wouldn't want to be you. I'm done with you for now. This is your trust meter. It shows how much the Captain trusts you. 
Beware it does not land in the red area. If it comes too far down, you'll be thrown back into chains. Well, all right, let's get going to Africa. Is the good doctor ready to go? By Neptune's knuckles. It's also about time to set sail. Let's round up the rest of the crew and begin our journey. Anytime the ship needs to move from one place to another, you get this little mini game with uh, your dwindling food supply at the top left corner, and basically you just gotta follow the path and pick up the food that's in the middle of the ocean for no apparent reason. But uh, yeah, follow the path and you'll get there. It's a fairly simple little mini game, but controlling the ship is kind of a pain. It does. It, it's really difficult to control it, especially with those wind clouds that seem to knock you back and forth. But yeah, if you've ever played a video game at all, you can pretty much get through these things with no problem whatsoever. Yay, we made it to Africa. Woohoo. Hi, Pootich. Welcome to Africa. Come talk to me. I've got something for you. Now, here's where the game starts to get a little weird. I've got a nice gadget for you. Chrono goggles. They allow you to see through time and space. Even having them on your head will let you see persons or items from other time periods. Right, chrono goggles. If you spot something or someone who doesn't belong to this time period, put the goggles on. This allows you to help correct any time slips you encounter. The goggles consume insane amounts of energy, so you can only keep them on for a short period of time and only use them a limited number of times. Good luck, Chrono Spotting. Right, so basically these Chrono Goggles, they sort of act as, you know, other little mini games you end up playing. Like this mini game where you're basically comparing and contrasting two pictures uh, supposedly of slavery in the 1750s and modern day slavery. Alright, at any rate, back to the storyline. Basically, you're here to negotiate the price of slaves for your captain. But in the process of carrying out the various tasks in order to do so, you see a familiar face. In a cage on the beach, I suddenly saw a face I hadn't seen in many years, but there was no doubt in my heart. It was my sister behind the bars. So basically, yeah, you got to free yourself and your sister from slavery is the end result you're looking for here. Honestly, even up to this point, I really haven't seen anything overtly racist in this. Now, I can see where some people would complain that the art style is vaguely reminiscent of sort of uh, uh, blackface, you know, racist sort of things. But you got to think, too, the white folks that are portrayed in this game, they're drawn pretty much the same way in this sort of comedic style. So, I mean, the style seems pretty consistent. Of course, due to the topic alone, there are some fairly cringeworthy parts of this game. For example, the part where you have to assist your captain in negotiating the uh, price of slaves. Now, go speak with the chief and get us the best deal possible. You have had time to inspect my slaves, so we'll jump straight to the offer. I'll trade you 20 females and 10 children for each unit of your brandy. 
Of course, the real part that bothered people about this game more than anything else was the part where after you purchase the slaves, you stack them. Are you ready to help with stacking the slaves? We need to get as many on board as we can. We'll sail at dawn if possible. Just a few days ago, this minigame was what you had to do next, which was the slave stacking minigame, which, as you can see, it bears an awful lot of resemblance to Tetris. Fortunately, due to pressure via social media, the developer of this game removed the offending Tetris slave stacking game, which, yeah, that was a bit racist. So all I've got is the screenshot you see. During the journey between Africa and the New World, the ship will have to stop a couple times to deal with both scurvy and starvation. Do you have some time to help me with all these sick people? Very good. I need you to help me separate those with scurvy from those with other diseases, so we can treat people correctly. Once you have successfully dealt with both crises, you're back on your way towards the Caribbean. Good job! Finally, you arrive at Barbados and the fort that's there, which, through playing the game, you soon discover that there's going to be a slave auction tomorrow and that your sister is going to be sold, so time to act is now. Did you find out how much time we have to... We must escape before dawn? Then we've got to hurry! We'll need to get me out of these shack. We need the keys. One of the guards must have them. See if you can take them from him and... To keep the gameplay elements of this game as spoiler-free as possible, I'll just say that, yeah, after doing a bunch of stuff, they managed to escape the fortress. And here's the end scene. We escaped into the jungle together with many other slaves while the white men were struggling to put out the fire. We were free and together again. How it went us from there, what battles we fought for our freedom, you must hear about some other time. Well, that's about it for playing History the Slave Trade. As you see, I only got not quite 300 points out of 400, so it seems that there's a bunch of stuff I haven't seen in the game yet. But that's fine. I think this is enough to give you the idea. Since this title is an educational title for children and not a AAA gaming title from a major company, I went ahead and created a new report card format. And as you see, the only major complaints I had were was the graphics. Those could have been a little bit better, I thought. And age appropriateness, uh, they claim it's for 11 to 14 year olds. I would go a little bit higher than that personally. And if you're going to go higher than that, take out the stupid talking mouse. I didn't think that added anything to the game. You know, uh, it was just a waste of time. And yeah, I definitely would recommend this to others. Uh, in fact, I'm really curious to see how the other, other titles are, like the Plague title and the Vikings title. And you may see those in a future review on this channel. Uh, now, as far as the racism part, I was originally sort of like, meh, yeah, this isn't, you know, it's not such a big deal. It's just something for people to get offended about. But then you see slave Tetris and you're kind of like wow okay maybe it, it wasn't designed to be racist but yeah that's like one of the worst things you could put in the game in fact there's little else worse I can think of to put in the game except for something crazy like the play history holocaust simulator or something but fortunately that title doesn't exist but at any rate I think the 
developers of the game responded uh, appropriately when they got rid of Slave Tetris from newer versions of the game. Anyway, I'd like to know what you guys think. Let me know by posting your comments in the box below. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. If there's a specific game you'd like me to review, drop me a note in the comment box below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you want to see more of my stuff, why not subscribe? Also, if you really want to, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.